Welcome to At The Cottage with me, Chef D. This year we're teamed up with Gypsy Wind Coach, Tourism Ontario, we're keeping it local. Today we're in Owen Sound, at the market, talking with the mayor and the beautiful Best Western in on the bay. Can you say wood fire grill, tasty steak, amazing butter, and a drink that will keep you coming back for more. Let's do this. So just a little bit of back history about the Owen Sound Market is that this is the first place I ever did a TV show here at the Owen Sound Market with Tommy Pink was the manager then. It was Thanksgiving. He was in a kilt and a turkey hat. It was so, <laughs> no pressure on you right oh, now. Oh yeah, I hate to be so disappointing. <laughs> so Richard, you know, the Owen Sound Market, you've gone through a bunch of changes, like even before COVID, you, you have this beautiful new area here. That's right. So there was a, about a $2 million reconstruction of the Market Square area last year, uh, done by the city of Owen Sound. And uh, in fact, we took occupancy uh, in early September, yep. uh, my wife and I took over as managers the yep. first week of August, took occupancy of the new building yep. in early September, and then of course everything was shut down on <laughs> March 13th when, uh, when the whole world closed, March 13th, we had to close as well. So now, opening back up the market has been a series of different events, right? It's been a bunch of different steps. I mean, I, I, I like to explain it to people, you know, the chickens were still laying even when we were shut down. So right. we had vendors with product that needed to be dealt with. So we uh, very quickly part partnered up with a Waterloo company called Local Line and yep. set up an online market. Okay. And so since uh, mid-April, we've had an online market running and uh, going very well. We have such a strong support base here. People oh, were so keen to see the market come 100, back. 100%. And then working with our local public health unit, we, we managed to come up with a plan that they could agree to, to reopen the market physically. And basically that was turning the market inside out. Mm -hmm. So all the vendors now face out and the people never go into the market. And right. that has made a difference. And people are very supportive you know we're almost back to our pre-COVID numbers. So with the vendors now is it the same number of vendors or has the vendors kind of shrunk back a little bit? A little bit smaller we we have 48 vendors uh, under the new configuration we have 35 spots but at this point we've been able to accommodate all the vendors who want to be here. So it's so seasonal some come yep. some drop off they come a different time of year so at this point we're accommodating everybody who wants to be here. So not only do you do the market, you're also a, a city councillor, right? Yeah, I'm also a city councillor. So all of my work is done in a one square block <laughs> radius here in Owen Sound. 100%, 100%. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I have to get some shopping done. You know, we do have a food show to do. Excellent. Thank you for taking a few minutes of your time to be with us today. I really it's my appreciate pleasure. It. Enjoy yourself at the market. I will. Okay. Hey, we're just finishing up at the Owen Sound Market. I thought, what better place to finish it all off than the Inn at the Bay, Best Western Property, right on the lake. My good friend, Chef Carter, Chef C, as I like to refer to it. Hey, brother. How's it going, man? You know, it's how can it not be good when I turn around and look at this? It's beautiful, isn't it? You get to see this every day. Every day. Every day. Now, you don't always get to be out here. You're in there. Unfortunately not, but <laughs> yeah, we do what we can. Right. So you've been doing here, sorry, you've been cooking it here at the Best Western now for about four years, right? Roughly four years, yeah, give and, or take. And you've kind of made it your own baby the last two or three years, right, That's as correct. executive chef? Yep, we've tried to uh, bring in some new products mm -hmm. and update the menu and keep it changing, daily features and keep it just changing so everybody's happy and get some new stuff. And it seems too that, you know, I know of course, you know, always local, always looking for something fresh, that type of thing. It seems really now there's a lot of younger people getting into this business, you know, Matthew Moss with the greens and that, and it's, it's coming all this way, isn't it? Big time. Um, I personally have a friend who just started up a micro green grow up. It's called New Life Farms and mm -hmm. he's doing wonderful around here. He's about the same age as me and yeah. it's just, it's nice to see new things changing and coming into this town. And it's, and it's nice to see the young, young people, you know, kind of, I'm getting at the stage now where it's starting to pass off to you guys and you guys carry the torch, right? Exactly. And, it, and that's why I have you right by the heat. <laughs> yes, and I thank you for that. 
<laughs> so we're gonna get started. Um, I got some carrots again from the local farmer, some garlic. These are, again, we're using a wood grill. Um, I love my wood grill from Crown. We already actually use it more than our gas grill at home. And I'm just gonna show the viewers. We have two different woods here. We have our apple wood here and I have our ash. Now, home is Kitchener for us and uh, the ash beetle has done some really damaging things to the trees there. But he kiln dries this, gets any of the bacteria. And the great thing about kiln dried, you never get the popping and you, you can feel the- it's beautiful heat. Right? So, especially on a 30 degree uh, day. <laughs> so, I can get started here. So, what made you go into cooking? Uh, it was a funny story, actually. I had never thought I would do this. I ended up getting a job when I was 14 as a dishwasher and yep. started all the way at the bottom and just kind of clicked and worked my way up. And, I was at a small breakfast restaurant in town here, and then I uh, I just kept going from there. And and really, you you've never really been formally educated as like going to school, but you've no. learned by different chefs and by different experiences, oh, right? Trial and error, right? Yeah, um, that's the way it should be. The internet's an amazing tool these days. You can learn yep. lots there, and a lot of experience just from different people. And I found that that has worked out well. Um, it's left me open to lots of different interpretations on food and not kind of sticking me in blinders, you know? No, I, I love that. I love that. I, I say to a lot of people, you know, go out, experience it, work for some different people, you know, different restaurants, different, you know, whether it be from a shorter to cook up to working as chefs like you and I, there's always different aspects you can learn in the business and speed always comes when you, you know, working associate as a breakfast cook, right? Exactly. That's a, the best spot to learn because you learn maybe not how to do fancy food, but yeah. you learn speed and timing and it's very very and important and people don't understand that whole timing part right you know right. so i'm just going to wrap this up i got a little bit of fresh garlic in with our potatoes now because we're going to put it closer to the fire i can do a double wrap you don't have to do a double wrap at home you can just do a single wrap and then right in and I think I was a pyromaniac guy as a kid because I just love playing with fire. There's nothing better than a wood, wood right? burning fire for cooking. So we're just going to put this right to the side and kind of lay it right close to the um, the wood or the, the coals as it were. And so it's going to have all that heat. The second one that we're going to do is our carrot. So I'm just, again, um, moles, if I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. But he's been coming to the, the farmer's market for about 25 years now. Um, carrots, potatoes, eggs, check him out. He's fantastic. Yeah, it's and a good little market. We're super lucky to have that around here. Uh, you know, we've been, I think our cottage, we've been up here now for 17 years, and I just always love going, always love going. You meet lots of good people and get some interesting products. Same type of thing. We're gonna put our carrots in whole, just like all the way, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. Now, when I was at the market today, the, the lady from Chatsworth's Honey was there. Yes. And so this is dandelion, dandelion honey. And she said, and there was a bee there. Um, is Reclaiming that the, his territory. Right, this is the first honey that they usually claim, like the bees claim to kind of get the hive going and that. So usually we don't get any of this honey at all. It's supposed to be really good for us, medicinal reasons why. Um, so we'll try it afterwards, but we're gonna add a little bit of honey. It's also a little bit bitter than your normal honey. And just, again, and just so you can get that, just because there's never enough honey. Create a nice glaze on I know, there. right there, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and it's a little bit, that little end of it. Yeah. You can taste uh, the pollen for sure. Now again, double, double wrap it so that you can, again, because you have lots of honey, you have lots of honey in here that you don't want to burn it. So double wrap it. We're not going to put it right on the coals. So now through COVID, how has this really affected you guys? It has been a process for sure. Yep. Um, the first month we were slow, but we stayed open just to yep. keep our name out there and service any guests that were staying here. Um, and then, you know, about after a month, we started pushing takeout and doing some special deals with a very limited menu and slowly took off to the point where, you know, we were doing kind of regular business just in takeout. And as soon as we opened the patio, it was back in business. Well, you have a beautiful spot and a lot of people, again, when we're talking with people in your kitchen and that, that a lot of people still don't realize that you can come here and you don't have to be a guest to have dinner here. Exactly. It's right in the hotel. You just walk right in the front lobby and it's 
It's right there. And you do a lot when when the attacks playing Co and correct. you know right type yeah. thing. Always good to make a reservation as well. Okay, we're, we're reservations are busy recommended. For dinner. Perfect, busy. A really cool young chef, fresh ingredients, doesn't get much better than this. We're gonna work on this for a little bit longer. We're gonna get some uh, more wood on the fire. And when you guys come back, we're gonna do some steaks. Steaks? You're gonna do your famous compound butter. Awesome. And all of that. Perfect. Won't you join us? So we're walking downtown, beautiful downtown Owen Sound with the mayor of Owen Sound. Ian, Ian, thank you. I've been, you've been sharing a whole bunch of interesting facts about being downtown Owen Sound and how the art community plays a really big part into this community. Well, that, that's, uh, well, we pride ourselves on our sports, on our arts and uh, culture, and of course on our natural environment. But right now our arts are doing really well. We've got uh, six or seven or eight art studios or galleries downtown uh, on Owen Sound that is drawing people from all over, so it's, it's great. So tell me a little bit about this place right here, because this is really cool, the story behind it. This is the uh, Georgian Bay uh, Center for the Arts. It's just opened. It's a uh, maker space in there, so there's um, uh, pottery ovens, there's uh, printmaking, there's jewelry making. They have classes for people. The young artists wanted to uh, come and they didn't have the facilities, they could come and use it until they get to that point that they can set up their own studio. So it's a really great space. And then of course, uh, the, the old, um, the old uh, bar along there, this at one time was a Kresge store, so right. they've got the original uh, counter space that they've uh, been able to pull up. And I always love floors. the old ceilings too, right? The old uh, copper ceilings or tin plate ceilings, uh, brick in the wall, it's, yeah. they've done a really nice job in here on the uh, on refurbishing it. So do you think now as, as you know, maybe more of the millennials and that are, are moving out of the cities, they're coming to communities like yours? We've seen a big uh, increase of people that A, couldn't afford to live in Toronto, Kitchener, uh, some of those bigger places mm -hmm. and wanted to live up here and, and lifestyle. You can walk your kids to uh, school in your slippers and go back and uh, sit at the <laughs> kitchen table and, and make a living. Um, and, and of course with COVID there's more people wanting to get out of Toronto and mm -hmm. the bigger cities and uh, not have to get into an elevator. I mean, uh, if I don't time my one light wrong, it takes me six minutes to get to work instead right. of the usual five, and that's on sound. You tend to know everybody in the street, you tend to know what's going on, and uh, it's a great place to live. No, it's, and like I mentioned to you on our walk, is we've been coming up for the last 17 years, I always like to kind of, my this is my home away from home, you know? Yeah, yeah. So now we're going to walk down to Burger Beats Pastry, okay. right, because we need something to eat. It's been a long oh, walk. Oh, perfect. <laughs> you guys like to eat, do you? <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Uh, we're coming to Brigitte's place because Brigitte's been in the market so many for so many years. Uh, I've gone there for when you're up at the Owen Sound Market, you definitely got to go for an FEB, which is probably my favorite breakfast sausage of all times on spelt bread, a little bit of aioli, an egg, double smoked bacon. It doesn't get much better. Mayor, are we ready to go for a sandwich? We're ready to go. Hi, <laughs> Bob. So we're here with my good friend Brigitte. Um, Brigitte, like I mentioned, has been at how long have you been at the market? Since 1993. Wow. Yeah. And that's where we met. We met yes. at the market because yeah. we'd come up and for breakfast have one of your famous FEBs. And she also does some amazing pastries, this peach dessert that's fantastic, just to name a few scones. You've got to come up and meet Brigitte. So what brought you here? Oh, well, uh, after being in the market, I wanted to open a cafe, so I opened it at the back of the artist co-op, and we were there for four years, but it was really apparent we needed a bigger space, a bigger kitchen, a storefront for easier access, and this place became available, mm -hmm. and it was so beautiful that I just couldn't say no, and uh, we moved in here, unfortunately, for March 1st this year. <laughs> right, yes. But we've survived, and it's mm -hmm. all good. So, yeah, and it has really proved to be worthwhile in spades. 
I, we're I so just, happy. I just love it, and you know, it fits your personality. Like the oh. <laughs> no, seriously, I just I love the old school walls and the floor, and, and this is fantastic. And you know. Um, but I think you have to get back in the kitchen because I think there's an FEB with my name on it. Oh, yes, but I, I have no fear. We have great staff. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to eat some breakfast. Perfect. Right? Thanks for coming up. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Thanks. So again, a grilling, hardwood, absolutely fantastic. You've been looking after the potatoes and carrots, haven't you, Chef? Yep, we are just gonna flip them okay. now. Make sure they get cooked evenly. So what's your favorite cuisine to cook? Like if, if this is, you're at home, you're cooking for your fiance, what is it that you're going Depends to? on the time of year, really. Yeah. Uh, summer, obviously grilling is the way to go. Nice steak, a butterfly, a whole chicken. Uh, winter, I tend to go, you know, more curries, yep. hearty, kind of stick to your ribs kind of things. So. Nice, nice. So I, I brought some Nutri Farm steaks up. Awesome. I hope you like grass raised, dry aged. Is there know. any other way? Uh, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. So um, I brought some tenderloin. Perfect. You know, I'm trying to, you know, continue to keep the thinner side of me. Well, I like the ribeye. It's more of a, you know, full yep. fat and yep. thin guy. So I could <laughs> probably use a bit more, right? So um, if you're looking for steaks and, and we mentioned and we joked about, you know, dry aged, when you go to, a, let's say a Costco, right? And you see the big package of meat is in that plastic package. You can age that up to 60 days. It's called wet aging. So you're actually in the package aging the um, piece of meat. Now, when you dry age, they take the, or they hang the, the carcass and let it dry age for, and some people go up to 45 days. I'm, I'm still stuck about 28 to 30 days because I think after that you start getting more of like the moldy, musty smell of the meat. And you lose a lot of your mm -hmm. weight on the muscle as well. So we're just going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm, I'm kind of a snob this way. I don't like the Montreal steak spice. I don't like putting a lot of different seasonings on my steaks. Nope the flavor of the steak should come out on its own. So now in the art of social distancing, we're going to try this. This is the first time we've done this. We didn't practice off camera. I'm going to pass the steaks over in this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. We almost know what we're doing here. <laughs> now we're going to let those go on just a little bit sooner than our strip loins, just because the, a little bit of thickness and away we go medium rare if you like your steak medium well like my parents do i've been cooking for them for about 40 years some now, people do right and that's if you love it that way please continue doing it then you want to look for a, a cut like the strip loin or as you were mentioning the ribeye and why the ribeye uh, there's a lot more fat content in it, so you're going to get a lot of flavor from that marbling. It's going to hold up to being cooked so well done, whereas a tenderloin, not a lot of marbling in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to dry it out, and it's a beautiful cut of meat, so you should enjoy that anywhere from rare to medium, in my opinion. Um, I like always mentioning, too, and I, I tell this to all the young, young chefs, too, is a meat thermometer is your... your uh, Big time. Right? You know, a, a lot of times when you get doing this, and we've been doing this a long time, um, you can start, you know, looking by the texture of the, the meat, you know, there's always the, you know, you can yeah, take it across tough. your hand and feel it, you know, if here is rare, medium rare, medium, and of course, well done. But, you know, um, a meat thermometer, uh, easy for me to say, a meat thermometer, you know, 128, you know, you're going to have rare, right? Exactly. And you just kind of go up from there. And especially when you're dealing with an expensive cut of meat, mm -hmm. it's better to right? be sure. So staffing wise, through this whole process, because you were mentioning you did the takeout. Now, did you keep your staff or how did it all work uh, out? Unfortunately, we pretty much laid everybody off. So it was <laughs> me and my general manager here for the first month and a half. And it, it was, <laughs> there was times where it was a little, you know, slow yep. and mm -hmm. watched a couple of basketball games. Yep. That was about it. But uh, we slowly started reintroducing staff as we got more business. and. It was, it was a tough go. I was getting a little scared there for a while, but uh, uh, now we've got most of them back and we're doing plenty of business. Now, are you seeing that more people maybe might be coming up from the cities or, and staying over for, instead of maybe going, you know, flying somewhere else, like they're actually coming up to Owen Tons of travelers and tourism going on right now. We've been 100% occupancy for the last week solid, so it's been very good and a lot of new faces. So I would agree that 
people aren't fly, able to fly right now, mm -hmm. so they're definitely doing the car travel. Right. Um, the other part of it, what do you, for if, if somebody's coming in and, we're, and you're coming to your, your place here, what would be the dish that you say, hey, this best signifies who I am as a chef? Um, I'd say our prosciutto chicken. It's one okay. of our most popular dishes. It's rich. It's got a bit of everything, spinach, smoked cheddar, chicken breast, and then crispy prosciutto with a roasted pepper cream sauce. Goes. I'll see you guys later. Well I'm, yeah. I'm going for the prosciutto. Hey, <laughs> we got things to do. Darn. Okay, are you, re are you ready? Oh, that's the other thing that I was going to mention in is that is you can just see what chef is doing just doing the quarter turn you never want to manhandle your meat and you never want to like keep flipping it because yeah. once you've flipped you don't go back right are and you also a good yep. tip too if it's sticking it's not ready to flip or quarter turn so you're just going to want to wait till that happens see those guys aren't quite ready mm -hmm. perfect are you ready i'm ready we're having too much fun here <laughs> The other question I love asking, and, and you know, because I get a lot of you know times viewers or young people coming up. So, why why a chef? Why did you become? Like I said before, it just kind of happened, and I really loved the fast-paced environment. Every day is different. It's not like sitting in a cubicle all day long. It's you never know what's going to happen one day to the next, and it keeps it interesting. And it's kind of a love of the whole system, the people you meet. It's just fast-paced and wonderful. Um, Words of wisdom. What words of wisdom would you give somebody, someone coming up to you and saying, hey chef, I want to go to college, I want to become what you're doing? Never think you're done learning. Perfect is something that's unachievable. You must always continue to strive to, to be better and you know, mold yourself and learn new things. You know, no one knows it all. Mm -hmm. You gotta take your experiences as they come and listen to whoever's gonna teach you. Nice, those are great words. So. We have a little bit of your compound butter. I, I have some here and, and I apologize, it's, it's melting just a little bit. So what's in here? So this is our butter that comes stock on our steaks. Yep. Um, also one of my favorite dishes, is if you're into the beef instead of the chicken. So what it is, we slow caramelize onions for properly for about 40 mm -hmm. minutes. Uh, and then fresh tarragon, salt and pepper. And then we put that into softened butter and roll it up and then get it cold. And then we cut slices off. As we're resting our steaks, uh, we will throw that on top and it will melt. And it's a good way to get a last minute flavor on your steak. Can we saute some of these? We can saute these up. Can we saute some of these? Yeah. We have some most amazing mushrooms here. We have some oysters, we have some shiitakes. Oh. Got to have the best. Right? Uh, and the nice meaty texture of these mushrooms go well with the caramelized mm -hmm. onion and the tarragon. It's just... Yeah, the earthiness of the mushroom and the tarragon, how fast and fantastic is that? And I put a little bit of the compound butter in there just to yep. accent the flavors as well with a little bit of garlic. And then when you get the mushrooms and the butter on the steak, it all just comes together. I'm getting really hungry. How about you? Flavor overload. So not only do you do cooking here at the Best Western, but you're becoming the drink guru, aren't you? Ah, we are moving into a new era of drinks. Very fresh, um, yep. using Fever Tree products, uh, which I don't know if you've ever had them. They make a nice tonic. They got a whole wide array. No, array I haven't. Of I haven't had any. They've got smoky tonics, aromatic tonics, Indian tonics, ginger beer. You name it, they got it. He didn't pick up on that. I haven't had any yet. Okay. Well, you're gonna have to try some. Are we gonna try some today? Yes. We're gonna try some in just a minute. <laughs> You know who's back over at the grill, eh? You know that, like, you know, who's sweating over here? I got kicked, I kicked out, you know? <laughs> Our carrots are done. Our kales are done. I was at market, so I picked up some fresh arugula. Which is beautiful, nice peppery right. flavor. And it. then once you put the carrots on it, it's gonna wilt it. It's just absolutely fantastic. It is so much better than spinach arugula. So. The flavor is just, you can't even compare. Right. So, now I have chef fingers, so they've been burnt and, and all that. Um, you know, I love you that you're standing there, but you have some drinks in front of you. What's going on? Well, you know, it is hot out here, so I better get to it. Okay. So this is a new drink we've been featuring in the restaurant. Um, again, using the Fever Tree products. What we have here is ginger beer. Uh, it's a, like a ginger ale, but a lot spicier. The ginger is really predominant. Uh, so today we're going to make a Moscow mule. Uh, basically, lime, simple syrup. You can do it with just lime juice, depending on your likes. We do it at the restaurant with syrup, just a little sweeter. Cuts the bitterness of the ginger beer. Vodka, 
and limes. So we'll start with the vodka. You can make this one ounce, two ounces, but since it's hot and we're working hard out here, <laughs> it's gonna be two. I like where you're going, my friend. Always measure, unless you're at home, you want a free pour, go ahead. <laughs> Now, do you have a, a vodka of choice? Like, is there something like, you know, do you like Tito's or is it just... Tito's is great, mm -hmm. uh, a little higher price point. Yep. If, if you're looking for a decent vodka in the same realm as, you know, Smirnoff, I'd yep. say Stolichnia is yep. one of the best yep. for what it costs. Uh, okay, so vodka's in there. Now we're gonna do two ounces of lime simple syrup in these beautiful Yeti mugs also. <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's hot out here. We had to keep it cold. Color, e color even matches the drinks, so that's perfect. This, um, these mushrooms are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you continue cook, uh, drinking over there and I mean, making the drinks, I'm gonna continue eating. Okay. Mm. All right, and then so, we'll throw a few spent limes in there. Okay, perfect. Good now, go. I know you have your compound butter, brother, you know, but I was at, you know, the Dairy Maid today downtown and I thought, what would be better not that I'm trying to up, up your game at all. I would never. I, but I just wanted to um, give you some, a little bit of blue Elizabeth. I washed my hands before. I know we're not supposed to do it. How's that drink? Well, I'll put this here Okay. And let you I just, grab it. I'm just going to um, put a little bit of your compound butter on. Our steaks are done. Our carrots are done. Beautiful. Brother, cheers. cheers. Here's to a beautiful area. Thank you, Chef C. Thank you for coming, Chef C. Check this out.